Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, whatever you celebrate. Uh, I hope you're having a fantastic end of the year and getting excited because we're already on our way towards the next growing season. Now's where you can start looking for seeds catalogs, start working on your plans and get something in place that you're gonna do for next year so that you can hit the ground running when the ground uh, defrosts. I'm gonna do a quick little walk around to show you some stuff. Um, there's maybe the odd tip that I wanna uh, just get across in a real quick little video um, before we're gonna have Christmas dinner. So the first thing I wanted to mention is that you'll notice something missing from the house this year. This is actually the first year that we didn't put up Christmas lights. And um, we've always been a Christmas light family for sure. We put up tons and tons and tons of lights. This year we didn't put them up for a couple reasons. First off, we're the only ones that are ever going to see the Christmas lights. There's nobody across from us. People driving by might see them, but you know, to waste all that electricity for something that really no one is going to see, I just didn't see the value in that. So, um, if it's, you know, in line with what you want, then consider now that Christmas is over, maybe putting your lights on timers or turning them off altogether, not only to save electricity and any kind of uh, pollution that comes from the production of that electricity, but also because lights really interfere with insects. So insects right now are experiencing complete and utter collapse. You'll probably hear a lot about the bees, but all insects are experiencing collapse and hundreds of species of insects are going extinct every single day. It's really, really, you know, time to get some action going. And one of the things you can help is turning off lights at nighttime. Many insects mating habits are actually uh, triggered based on how light or dark it is out. So if you have a lot of background ambient light from things like floodlights on your house, Christmas lights, you know, put them on maybe during dinner time when people are coming home from work if you want to be festive. That's fantastic. I love the holiday season. Uh, but definitely consider turning them off, you know, as early as possible so that you don't mess around with insect mating and we're going to get as many new insects born as possible. Consider also leaving wild and crazy gardens up. Uh, don't necessarily clean and tidy all your gardens in the fall. If you can kind of let the plants do their thing, the insects will also do their thing. Now, if you have a specific pest that you're worried about, then definitely, you know, clean up whatever, you know, plums or apples are on the ground. If you're afraid of plum cuculio, but if you can, try to leave herbs and flowers up. Let plants go through their full cycle because some insects actually eat and nest in those uh, plants during the winter time. Also, consider leaving habitat in and around your food forest. I see a lot of permaculturists who only think about the human aspect to what they're doing. Little bunches of logs, piles of rocks that are in there somewhere um, under the snow, little mason beehives, those kind of things are really, really important for you to add into your food, uh, food, food forest, your fruit systems. So don't just plant trees, don't just plant apples and pears and plums and peaches and things for humans. Definitely also plant herbs and flowers for the insects and habitat for insects and critters. Rocks, stones, sticks, twigs, all those things, although they can look maybe a little unsightly to people who don't understand the function of those things, they can be very, very valuable for the insect life that we depend on. Make sure that you're a busy beaver. Make sure that you're never stopping going to collect stuff like leaf bags. Found someone who had some extra leaf bags out, so we went and filled the trailer up again. Consider inside your designs to include some spaces specifically for holding water. Little tiny micro ponds like this, surrounded by wildflowers, can do wonders for the actual fruit set on your trees because you'll get better pollination for reducing pests because if you keep the pond aerated you'll get dragonflies that are central to all the food forests and they'll kind of go around eating all your predator or all your pests they're one of the best predators that you can get so consider adding in things like tiny little micro ponds into your 
site but make sure that they're aerated you can get like a little they're called a water buddy or a water wiggler and they for a really small pond say something the size of this it's just like a little device that's solar powered and it'll just flap around a bit and just put little waves in the water that's actually enough to stop mosquito from laying in there or you can get a little aerator like that down there and it's very very energy efficient and it'll just kind of bubble water keep it moving keep oxygen in there um, the mo motion of the water will stop it from freezing and the oxygen will help prevent any kind of mosquitoes all through the year even in the warm season and consider if you have wilder areas to leave some of it wild for nature you don't have to plant everything out you can leave some of it for specifically nature maybe add in some wildflowers so start looking around right now this time of year at what native plants are in your area and add those into your food forest it'll be very exciting and you'll expand your knowledge of the plants that you know thanks for watching everyone and i'll see you probably in the new year take it easy